Hello and welcome to The Real Talk. How are you doing and how was the week? Thank you so much for sparing time to join us for yet another conversation. Oh, and by the way, just a reminder, if you have anyone that you'd love us to bring to the show, you have a story that you want to hear, please let us know. Suggest using the hashtag The Real Talk and we will appreciate that. We're coming to you live from Mythos Boutique Hotel in Kiovu. You have a small lunch engagement. You should check on them. They've got the corporate lunch that they serve every weekday. We're live on YouTube, Rwanda Television Channel. Please go share that link so that we have as many friends of ours as possible catching the conversation. Our guest today is a fashion designer, a fashion entrepreneur. Oh, I know you know her. She <laughs> needs no introduction. <laughs> Thank you. you will meet her in a second. Sonia. Hi. It is such a pleasure to see you. Amazing, amazing. Um, Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Thank yes. you. Our guest, as you can see, is Sonia Mugavo of SM. Yeah, <laughs> simply SM. Yes, SM. I actually have people call me SM and yeah. they're like, but it's also your brand. So I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, so say Sonia Mugavo for the brand and okay. call me SM. <laughs> and, yes. and why did you just choose to go with SM? You didn't want to think that much for no, a name no, or no, no. I wanted to be accountable because you know if something has your name yes then you'll take it seriously I love that you know yes. it's like I'm like okay this is my brand it has my name on it yes so I'm going to keep myself accountable and uh, I'll try to create the best products that I can <laughs> That's a perfect explanation yeah we're yes. so happy to have you with us Sonia let's go back to yes. your childhood tell us about Absolutely. yourself let's go back to where you were born and the kind of family you were raised in. Okay, so I was born in 1990 on May 5th. I was actually born here in Kigali. Um, say Ashika, to be specific, it's not too far away from here. No, um, it's the corner. So I am a Kigali girl. Mm -hmm. born, city born, born. City born, city born. yes. <laughs> yes, so I grew up in a pretty normal upbringing, um, very loving family. And um, when I think about my childhood, I just smile because I just think, we grew up, we're very blessed to have mm -hmm. our parents and um, just the whole, I don't know, we'll, we'll I guess <laughs> as yeah. the conversation goes on, yeah, yeah, I'll be answering more questions. And you did dinners together. Yes, did dinners, we do yes. a lot of like... You know, it's something that we take for granted. Absolutely. Yes. I, Absolutely. I, had, I had almost a similar childhood and yeah. when I later went to college and met a lot of people that never had the privilege of having both parents, Absolutely. you know, not having all the siblings around. Yes. I, I realized how blessed I was. And so from then on, Very I took it blessed. really seriously and made it a prayer point. Yes. I always thanked God Absolutely. for that. Yeah, because even yeah. me growing up, I think my yeah. parents made sure we, my dad was really big on uh, trying new things, trying new cuisines. Mm -hmm. So now that he's gone, he's, yeah. he passed away in 2020, it's always, it's always happy memories when you go like experiencing new cultures mm -hmm. or watching shows that he used to watch. So all these things, the memories really, I yeah. guess they, they pull you through That's even it. when you're grieving yeah. and it's very important. They do. Yeah. What were your parents doing? Uh, before 1994? Yes, were they in business? Were yes. They? Oh, yes. There's, there's the life before. <laughs> yes, there's the, the life, life after. Before, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So before, my dad was actually a, a, a politician. He was in the Liberal Party. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's actually, he was actually, um, he studied law. Mm -hmm. So he was, a, he was a lawyer. My mom studied law too after the genocide against the Tutsi when she was able to go to school. But before, she was a teacher. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah explains the whole cuisine and the whole <laughs> adventure in the yes, family. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, yes. So yes. you were four years old, Sonia, when the genocide against the Tutsi mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. I wonder what that meant for you then, you know, coming mm -hmm. from this place where you have this neat family, mm -hmm. tight relationship, and mm -hmm. then the genocide happens and you mm -hmm. go through a turmoil and even a time when you're separated. You separate, Let's yes. Just take us through that. Um, any recollection of it absolutely a lot of the recollections are stories because yeah. you know i was very young i do have some memories some um, uh traumatic ones but uh when i think about so how life really shifted because like as a four-year-old you're very attached to your parents you're attached to your mom and one of the things that i heard that i would cry for when i was separated with my parents which i will get into the story i would cry for my mom 
I would cry for yogurt, Ichivo Guto, and Fantara. <laughs> Literally, those are the three things I would always like be begging for. Right. I'm like, Mama, you know? Because whenever you saw you your mom, you saw yes, Ichivo Guto. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the way it happened was, so on the 6th, let's go back to the 6th of, of uh, April, 1994. Mm -hmm. um, as told by my siblings and my family, mm -hmm. it was a normal day. Um, but then that night, that's when the plane of uh, the then president crashed. And my sister, Denise, who was 12 years old, was quite, she was much, I mean, she was grown. So she, she understood what was going on. And at the time, she understood that we lived in fear. We lived in, um, the, po the, the political um, sphere wasn't safe for us. So she runs to my mom and she tells her, oh my gosh, mom, did you hear? I guess this is good news. But mm -hmm. my mom was like, go to bed. And my mom usually was a person who's always composed. You can never really know what um, she's thinking. Mm -hmm. Even now she's the same, but then also apparently she, she was very like shaken. Mm -hmm. And so when my dad came later on, um, the next day we woke up and it was a normal day too, very quiet. Mm -hmm. And Easter was coming up and we'd bought, apparently we would have this tradition of wearing new Easter clothes, mm -hmm. but my mom suggested we wear them to that day because she was like, she doesn't know about the future. So my sister was like, hmm, this is weird. Mm -hmm. And then my mom cooked our favorite meal and literally we sat on the table and apparently my, 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 both my parents, that my Denise, she says they looked like they were far away in thought. They weren't. Something was going something on. Something was going on. Yeah. And so after lunch, my dad went to take a nap and as we were clearing the table, we lived right in front of Mount Jali. Mm -hmm. We saw soldiers running, screaming, we're coming to Are kill you. Coming Cause towards literally, you. Yes, literally, because the Mount Jali was, we lived in Yamirambo at the time, mm. and uh, near Gisimba orphanage, and that's where we actually eventually went. Mm. But, so my mom was like, a it was like mission, you know, survive. So like, we lived next to Congolese people, and apparently we had created a pathway without getting out of the compound. We could literally get there. Okay. So you used to go play there? Yes, with the kids. Yeah. Uh -huh. So... We run there, tells Denise, grab your sisters, go. So we go there and uh, they first refused to, the neighbor, the, the Congolese, he's like, the neighbor wasn't there. Yeah. So he was with his, um, I think, brother. Yeah, his brother was, uh, I guess, uh, he was sitting the house. Mm -hmm. So he's like, no, I can't. But apparently the guard who knew us and saw us on a, on a regular basis, he was like, it's fine, you can go in my corner. So like the, yeah. the corner's corner. they refused because... They, they knew were letting you in. It's my bad danger. Oh, yes. Absolutely. It was yeah. a danger to them. So it's also understandable. Mm. But so apparently my mom joined us like within the hour without my dad. And she was crying, but she was trying to like, you know, be quiet because they could literally, we heard people passing by, shooting, people screaming. So they, they had started killing then. Yeah. And that I remember, my mom literally holding my mouth and saying, do not cry, do not cry, you know? And that I remember just we're being separated with like a curtain oh and there's literally chaos outside and we're in this tiny room. Yeah. Mm. And so eventually, later that night, my dad came. He survived. He survived and um, he came and he told us it's time to go. So we went to Gisimba orphanage mm. and that's where we were for the 100 days. But my parents also had to leave because they threatened to burn the, ha uh, the orphanage if the parents stayed inside. Yeah. And somehow, they luckily, only the children. There. Yes. Luckily, my parents also were able to hide within the orphanage, but we didn't know about it. And they literally saw us, like day to day, when we're like, for example, when you trained, that's when we would get to shower. So they would see. Imagine seeing your kids through a window, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's that's. And That's so for the story those 100 in a nutshell. Days, yeah. You know, how were you guys, how did you even survive through all those days? To be honest, I think you get into like airplane mode, like, you, or like you just become numb and mm -hmm. you're just waiting for your day to come. Because at that time, apparently, there would, there would be stories of like, oh, Kanaka, this person, they killed this person. You're like, oh, it was like, like yeah. very normal. Yeah. Yeah. And then one time where it's even like, it's like literally a trauma that I have, they killed someone in front of the kids. And literally we saw, imagine seeing death at four, four, seeing someone fall, being shot, and you see blood everywhere. Mm. So literally that's a constant nightmare that I had growing up. Yeah. And I didn't really interpret it until I started um, therapy and seeing a therapist. Yeah. yeah. We will talk about therapy later because mm. it's also something that we take 
lightly. Absolutely. Yes, we take that lightly. Yeah. And a lot of us then just keep living life and going through it, carrying that burden. I did. I carried this, this for 17 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. You'll talk to us about it. Mm -hmm. How was it reconnecting with family later? So, you know, you've, you're in, under these circumstances where you yeah. don't know. Tomorrow could be your day. It could be your sister's mm -hmm. day. Yeah. When you eventually got to reunite as a family, mm -hmm. what are those emotions that you um, went through? I guess for me, like getting my mom back, <laughs> that was my number one thing. And your but orange. Then, I know, and my orange <laughs> and my kibuguto, but yeah. it's crazy. Apparently, after the genocide, when we're able to access food and such yeah. things, you had developed such habits where you want to literally like hide, you know, because you, you feel like mm. it's going to be taken away from you. Mm. So Because that's but, what you went through. Yeah, that's what you went through, like sharing. It was a fight, like, getting in. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So, but it was very happy. Yeah. Life got better. Mm -hmm. So much better. <laughs> so much better. Yeah, so, and I guess it's for a lot of Rwandans. I mean, yeah. we are really blessed. The fact that as a whole family, we're able to survive. That's very oh, rare. That's and that. that's something that we don't take for granted. And that's something that I grew up thinking about. But somehow also became sort of, uh, when I was going through my, I guess, traumas or whatever, I was like, I'd, I, what excuse do I have? Because I have people who literally, there are people who lost everyone. Yeah. So when I started some, feeling some kind of way, like, you know, with my mental health, I was like, no, Sonia, you can't. You can't yeah. complain. And that's something that my parents even told me. Mm. But we'll get that. To, it's going to be worse for you. <laughs> yes. And then, you know, you then discover, and I'm sure this you didn't discover in a day. Mm -hmm. You've reunited. Then you re discover that lots of our family members are it's gone. Crazy. It's crazy. How no, was that for your family? It's, it's so crazy. Like our grandparents on both sides, my mom, my mom, there were I think about 13 kids mm -hmm. and five survived. And then just hearing, even when I, now that I'm, I've grown up, mm. I look at my parents and I'm like, oh my gosh, like how did you even go through this? But I think as a country, we went into survival mode and it's like almost like after the genocide, it's like boom, it's time to rebuild the country time to take care of my families. So I don't think it took a while. I don't think they even processed it. Yeah. Because they would talk about everything in the past. You're right. My classmates, my parents, mm -hmm. my neighbors. Like, how do you, like, I can't imagine myself being in that position. Mm. How did life change for you as a family? So remember yes. when I asked you about what your fathers were doing, there was what your parents were doing. Yeah. There was the before and after. Yeah. Did they change their careers? Did mm -hmm. they maybe change the schools that you attended? Yes, for sure. I mean, Rwanda got liberated. So we got liberated in a, in, in, we did get liberated. Mm -hmm. So at the time, like I told, I told you, my dad was a politician. He became a minister. Mm -hmm. He was the, a minister in the, in the, in the reconciliation uh, government. Mm -hmm. So, but it's interesting because they weren't paid in like money. They were paid in food. Mm -hmm. At the time, the government didn't have money, money. to pay. Mm. So, um, but at least we had food and we had each Where other. Where was the food coming from? Well, the government. Yeah, itself. yeah. That <laughs> so you'd get rations from the government. Yeah, so that was, that was, that, that's all we, did, we yeah. needed at the time. And definitely schools were coming up and mm. uh, I went to Green Hills Academy. And then, yeah, mm. I'm, I'm very thankful for, yeah. for the life that God was able to give me and give us as a family and... Yeah. Yeah, and I don't yeah. take that for granted. No, you can't. You can't take that for granted. Yes. As a child, yes. what did you want to become? So you've gone to school, and mm -hmm. thank God the country <laughs> is on a positive trajectory. Absolutely. So you, what, yeah, what were the thoughts that you had in Interesting enough, when I was, was really, growing up, I was good at many things. I don't mean to brag. <laughs> No, Sonia, you just bragged. You just <laughs> no, had no, a bragging no, no, no. moment. No, no, no. I, no, I literally, I was really I'm good kidding. at math and okay. physics, but then I was really an artist too. So at that, I struggled with knowing what I want to do. So I was like, okay, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to be an architect, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so I, I thought I wanted to be an architect. Yeah. That, that's what I thought I wanted to be. Mm. And then I saw the long studio hours and I did an internship in construction and I'm like, wow, I'm not very patient. Yeah. So seeing a building take years, I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it's finish this and rescue this people. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I went into more visual communication okay. and then, uh, then fashion. Yeah. And do you have any pleasant memories from that time in school, especially? In school, Your time yes. in school, whether it was memory between, uh, of something that happened between you and your siblings or... 
just something that you remember nice. from that time. So it's interesting because my friends now were parents, and these are pa these are these are these are people I, we grew up with, literally from grade three. Some of my friends like nine years old, eight years old. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting the fact that we've had this friendship, so we can go back and tell these things to our kids. Really? And now we're raising our kids together. So yes. we go through a lot of, you know, do you remember this? Do you remember first crash? Do you remember, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like we all thought we'd be married at 23. You know, like and you all thought you'd be, you'd be married certain people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> person. Then you're not. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad I'm married mm -hmm. to the person I'm married <laughs> to. But um, yeah, it's very, it's interesting how life turns out. And uh, we still have each other. So I'm so happy about that. The person that. you're married to today is the yes. person that you wanted to marry back then. <laughs> But it's also interesting because how you meet your life partners and then you think you're, yeah, it's crazy how life works. Yeah. yeah we'll talk more about it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Let us take a short break. We will be back. We're having the yes. real talk with Sonia Mugabo, a fashion entrepreneur. I know you've, know you've heard of SM and that's the Sonia that we're having a conversation with. Please go to Rwanda Television, the YouTube channel, and share the link. We're coming to you from Mithos Boutique Hotel. Thirty years of uh, Kwibuka. We're doing Kwibuka thirty this year. Mm -hmm. The journey of healing yes. has taken thirty years yes. for us as a nation. How would you say it has been for you as an individual? I need mm -hmm. you to speak for you as an individual, you and the family, mm -hmm. but also you and the friends around you. Friends around yeah. us. Okay, that's a very great question. <laughs> I'm trying to think because I feel like there's so many layers to it. Mm. Uh, for me as an individual, just like our country, I think I've gone through a roller coaster, you know, like we've been through, imagine what we went through, the trauma, mm. healing that trauma, becoming aware of it. So all that, I've learned a lot in the past 30 years. And um, I'm like, I think all my experiences make up for who I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, oh, what if this hadn't happened? But I guess it happened. Um, and as a person, I have been through a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I have, I have history with um, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. I live with bipolar, so I live with a mental illness. Yeah. I take medication for it, but Until I'm functional, today. yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm but a you're functional. functional. Yes, <laughs> because a lot of times there's a lot of stigma, and then that's it also is, one yeah. thing about, for me, either bipolar or mental health, it's about breaking the stigma, especially mm -hmm. in a society. It makes sense mm -hmm. if, we, if there's mental illness. It makes sense because of what we've been through. It does. It's crazy to even think about, like I think we talked about how my parents, like I was asking them, how do you function? How do you wake up and just keep on moving with, after having so much loss? So, um, and witnessing. And all witnessing. Witness, and you know, all waking up, seeing that Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think for 17 years, I was like, Sonia, your family survived. Mm -hmm. You have to be thankful. So I grew up in this, you cannot complain. You cannot. So when I started going through anxiety, started feeling some kind of way and I was telling my mom I felt depressed she also didn't understand because she was also dealing I mean she had to move on fast to be able to raise like you know take care of her family yeah. so whatever I was feeling she was like Sonia you are being a bit childish you yeah. are you know like we survived yeah. we gave you Everyone this life dealing with something yes we're all you dealing should with be something. thankful Absolutely. you know what your cousins lost yeah that's how and so then the blaming myself started happening. I'm like, why am I feeling like this when I am one of the few yeah. that are not an orphan, that have the opportunity to get great education, to have a mm. good life. But then I got to a point when I even started doing therapy, they're like, you cannot suppress your emotions. That's mm. how you feel. And it's, your, your feelings are valid. Mm. And I think as a society, we need to know that as well. Our feelings are valid. And if you're having a bad day, it's okay to have a bad day. Don't put it on so someone else. But don't do with it with yourself. <laughs> it, yeah. But it's okay to have. So in these 30 years, I've gone through a journey of struggling to, to really understand what I'm feeling. But then I've gotten to a point where I've accepted my past. And I'm working towards my future. Mm. I am a mom. Yeah. I want to be the best mom for my son. I'm a wife. I'm a friend. Yeah. 
I'm a sibling, I'm a you're daughter, an I'm an aunt, you're a business so woman. <laughs> I'm a business woman. Yeah. So I've decided to show up and to show up the best way that I can in all those um, different, you know, capacities that I'm in and really, but also take it one day at a time. Hmm. That really resonated with me when I lost my dad and grieving was just crazy. Literally, I was daddy's girl. So yeah. we're both last born. So we used to, you know, crash a lot, but in like, yeah, <laughs> in a good so it, way. Was, it was very hard. It was yeah. very hard. But then also losing him made me realize, Sonia, you need to continue the path that he was on. I meet people and they're like, oh my gosh, your dad, he did this. He was, he was this. So I'm trying to be like him in the sense yeah. that trying to leave a mark, but also a legacy where when people meet my son, they'll say your mom. Your mom, yes. Your mom did this. Your mom you'll, did yeah, this. You'll have left a mark. Yes. And he will benefit. He will benefit from, from that. Yeah. And so that's what I'm trying to do every day. It's yeah. not easy. I, I can't say every day is rosy, mm. but I try to show up. You know, thank you for talking about that struggle because again, we also live in a society where, as you said, it's not just your mom, but even the people around us. When Sonia starts talking, yeah. somebody could go like, but why is Sonia? Look at the life she lives. What does she know what is she about lacking? suffering? What is she lacking? <laughs> yeah. So we make it seem like the only people that are allowed to be traumatized, talk about uh, certain disorder, mm -hmm. are those that go hungry, those mm -hmm. that are poor, those that are what, and you, the moment you start talking, talk, keep quiet. And okay, also, Lord. one thing that people don't realize, I always say with the genocide against the Tutsi, there are people with visible scars, but then there's also people with invisible scars. And as a society, there's a lot of invisible scars. Mm -hmm. And if we don't address these issues, then we, we should be worried. And I we feel like it's yeah. really, really important to, that's why I'm an advocate. I think I'm, I, I feel sometimes I'm like, am I doing enough? But every time I'm able to be given a platform like this, that's why I talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. That's why I want us to, as a society, it's okay. It's okay to, 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 to be feeling sad. It's okay. But then how can we make you happy? How yeah. can we how heal do you? Talk about this. How, how can we, we talk about this? Yes. How can how you do we seek help? Yes. How do we seek problem, help? As you said, you went for therapy. People don't do no, that. No, they don't do that. They yeah. don't believe in that. So you're telling us it's okay to see It's okay. Talk, talk but then someone. also, even like, I feel like maybe that some of the therapy, therapy may be expensive. Not everyone can yeah. afford therapy. Mm. How, how can we make therapy affordable? Mm. So all these things, I feel like with the mental health, it's important to address mental health, just like mm. any illness. Just like any illness is given, you know, support, even especially with our country's history, yeah. it's very important. I once hosted a lady and she address the same issue talked about yeah. it and said as you said there are visible scars and invisible scars the yeah. invisible scars get passed on from mm -hmm. one generation to another they are trans yeah they're transgenerational they're transgenerational so yeah. if we don't deal with it yeah. then it will go to absolutely because my child and their yeah. child and yeah because the way the way i see transgeneration uh because think about it imagine i'm a mom i'm not healed mm -hmm. i am raising a child with all this trauma with all these scars i'm not going to be the best mom right no and so that child is also going to be, is going to have the effects of you're not healing. Yeah. And then, you know, do you realize it's like a pattern? They will pass it on. Yeah, they will yes. pass it on. So it's, so it's important for us to make it affordable. It's mm -hmm. important for us to talk about to it. To talk about it, yes. Create safe spaces. That is it. That Just is it. Create yeah. safe spaces and to feel like there's it's no okay. Shame. There's mm. no shame. Mm. You know, it, there's no shame because sometimes when you talk about mental health, people think literally mental, <laughs> like yes. crazy. Yes. You know, on yeah. the streets. Right? Like you should like, be institutionalized. Yes. It's just, no. Yes. You know. Yeah. You know, it's like make. But, and, and yet we won't blame anyone because that's no. how we've, we've grown up knowing uh, the only mental problem we know yeah. is the one that is extreme and sends people to the hospital absolutely and that's yeah. that's that's that that's uh, how can i say that needs to change that mm. that um, narrative yeah that narrative needs to change how can we use social media to help with this because so, yes. you've seen what goes on absolutely on social media platforms. and it's interesting because social media has really changed the game mm. and so like i said let's let's talk about it more you both you and i have platforms how can mm. we on days where let's there's something I saw um, because usually such days have a day maybe mental health world mental health day no every day should be yeah. mental health day 
Mm -hmm. Let's check on people. Let's ask them, how are you doing? Create safe spaces for them to be able to reach out. Or work with, um, I think there's one that's Solid Minds. Solid mm -hmm. Minds, they, it's, um, it's, uh, I think it's, they have therapy and mm -hmm. uh, they have different uh, d types of therapy. And these places we can, how can we make it common so people can know about these, yeah. these, yeah. these facilities that people don't know about they the don't facilities. know. No, 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 no. Cause I have a lot of people who reach out. They're like, yeah. so where do I go? Yeah. I have, I have a, I have a sibling. I have a mom, I have a child. Mm. So we need to educate, I mm. guess, mm. and uh, create a lot of awareness. Yeah. I know UNICEF And give did. each other grace as well. Because I think, as you said, yes. the times when somebody wants <laughs> to talk about their problem it's online, okay. I've seen a guy uh, or somebody coming up yeah. saying something, and they tell them, you, I'll give you money to go buy a rope. Imagine. And Imagine. Take your life. And that's, yourself. that's, that's And you don't know the kind of person no. you're talking to. You don't know what no. stage they're at, how I delicate know. they yeah. are. And also, something about social media, we present ourselves the way we're not. I mm. might be struggling, but I'm showing this perfect face. Yeah because you feel like everyone else's life. No, we all go through it. So it's mm. really important as a society to be supportive of each other and also to encourage mm. each other. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Today you're a successful business person. You're a mom. You're a wife. How are you loving that? And did you ever <laughs> envision it? Um, I think the best <laughs> of all is being a mom. Like, I never thought... I was so scared because, you know, you feel like even at the hospital mm -hmm. when I was l like when I had my baby and they told me, OK, you, you are free to go. I was like me. Mm. You're giving me responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm taking this yeah, back home. Eh? Like, oh, my gosh. Like, it was very scary. But uh, <laughs> you learn so much about yourself mm. through the journey and through through in my case, through my son. And mm. I just feel like he has made me light up like he's made my world. Like, I miss him when I'm at work, you mm -hmm. know, and I can't wait to go back and just be with him and seeing the milestones mm -hmm. and just seeing the growth. And I understand what it feels to be a parent. And now I really understand all those days my parents worried for me, mm -hmm. not knowing where I was. Maybe they're like, oh, you, you know. And sometimes I'm like, you're exaggerating. But now, literally, yeah, you, yeah. you, you, you become... You, you exaggerate. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're so protective. So yeah. I think, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful, though. Yeah. I'm thankful for the journey. And then as a genocide survivor, how... How are you ensuring that, as you talked about, the transgenerational? Yeah. Is there anything you're doing deliberately to make sure you're not transferring that trauma to him? I guess are you I am telling very stories. Are you? He's still young, but I definitely yeah. think it's important for him to know the uh, the history of our country, the history of what we went th through. Because I feel like also these are uh, us millennials mm. might be scared to tell our maybe because I have. I have nieces and nephews that are 14, 15, and they're always, always asking. And we try to let them know, you know, because it's important. Because mm. I always believe you can't move forward if you don't know where you're coming from. You That's know? the history of the That's country. That's the, the history of the country. Yeah. We can't rewrite it. Okay. So sometimes we want to be protective. And I can see that too. I understand. Mm. But it's important to say things as they are. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And so you see yourself as he yes. grows. You see yourself telling him things mm -hmm. as they were, as they have Absolutely, happened. Yeah. absolutely. Wonderful. Um, SM came to life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Surprised me, <laughs> huh? <laughs> how, did, how did you give birth to this, that's this my first media baby. house? Exactly. <laughs> you, that's your first baby. <laughs> and how was it setting up the business? What did you go through? What yeah. sort of challenges have you gone through as a female entrepreneur mm -hmm. and how did you overcome them so when i think about sm i uh, i smile because i'm like oh the beauty of being young uh -huh. because i don't think i can start a business today myself at 30 i'm almost 34 because now i'm like i have a son to feed i have a you know diapers to buy yeah. you know i'm a wife but when i was young i was living at my parents house mm. so i really took I guess I said t I took the space. I took I take I took the space mm -hmm. to create this thing, not knowing what I was creating, not knowing how big it would be, or not even thinking about that far. Even when I celebrated ten years this past October, I was like, yes. just trying to sit down. I'm like, wow, what a journey from myself to one tailor to five tailors to ten tailors. Look at that. To dressing wow. yeah. people from all over the world, and uh, it's. It's, it's, it's definitely a dream that I did not ever think it would happen. Yeah. So, 
yeah, the yeah. beauty of being young mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. taking taking space and taking risks. And uh, it's not been easy, yeah. but uh, I guess when you love something and when something is for you, it's really for you. Mm, that's the thing. Yeah. Is Rwanda an easy place to do business? Uh, definitely. Rwanda mm. is easy to start business like yeah. the two business days, RDB registering. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there's challenges, too, because being a landlocked country in my domain, for example, fabric is hard yeah. to find. But, you know, the government tries to help us. Like, for example, there's uh, a tax. Um, they removed some tax for us to be importing fabrics. Okay. So the, the government is really supportive. But then also, um, I would say it's still very new. And uh, we have a competition. It's such a the fashion industry is, uh, is worth a trillion dollars, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, big. <laughs> and I don't feel yeah. like we're taking as much um, uh, opportunities or advantage of that. Mm. And so even like with- So you think the opportunities for, for Rwandans? Absolutely. In that space, yeah. Absolutely, like I mean, I'm able to um, have right now permanently 10 tailors and like two of them came to me like, thank you. I'm literally the breadwinner. This woman, she was like, I'm a breadwinner. My kids, oh. two kids have gone through college. Mm -hmm. And this is because of you. And I hadn't thought about it like that. You know, for me, it was like, oh, I'm creating nice things. I'm mm -hmm. selling. You're working for me. I'm paying you. But literally, the brand is changing livelihoods for my workers. Yeah. And that's for and me. that's what you wanted. And that's what I wanted. Yeah. And that's what gives me even more... Um, uh, how can I say strength and like to keep on going because I'm like okay if I'm able to employ 10 yeah, now yeah. in about let's double the numbers let's do let's, 20 let's do let's, 30, exactly yeah exactly let's bless more families exactly. you know if we're feeding yes, one today yes, let's do yes, five next week absolutely yeah absolutely and I think that's uh, one of the mandates of the government mm -hmm. you know creating jobs yeah. um, uh, inspiring the youth mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and oh, yes. uh, and the government is yes. hell bent <laughs> on inspiring the youth yes, to yes. do things with themselves. Absolutely, yeah, get busy. absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So, as yes. an entrepreneur, Sonia, what would you say has been your biggest challenge yes. so far, mm -hmm. and what's your greatest achievement? Sure. My biggest challenge for me is when you start as an entrepreneur, you're doing everything. You are the designer, you are the accountant, you're the comms, you're, you're the, the tailor. You're the <laughs> I wasn't a tailor, thank God. <laughs> I found tailors to help me. <laughs> But it was a lot. Mm -hmm. and, but I'm like, I can't be able to afford all these people. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, you realize, Sonia, actually try your best to. So what I did was, because I'm a visual communicator, mm -hmm. um, I'm also in the communication field. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I had other jobs on the side mm -hmm. that were able to um, give me money to be able to invest in SM, and I'm able to employ an accountant. You didn't have to do everything. No, I don't have to do everything and run mad yeah. because I would not, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, so run mad yes. and not even achieve anything. So I think that's my biggest challenge: trying um. to do everything. Because at first you're like, oh. yeah, yeah. and now and now I'm able to say that I am doing SM full time, okay. but I, I can still now afford to have all those people. So and that's that's ten years of you know. Being patient. <laughs> it requires yeah. patience. A lot of patience because it's so easy to give up because you're like, you're working in losses. The mm. fashion industry is glamorous. People think you have money. They're seeing you in beautiful clothes. Yes. But your bank account says different. Something else. <laughs> you might have 30 uh, events in the year, but that's all. Yeah. We're all on this other side saying, made in Rwanda garments are not yes. cheap. They're yes. expensive. But yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. Mm. So when, when you overcame that, when you yes. accepted that you needed to find help, Absolutely. bring in people, it made things easier for you. It made things easy, yes. Yeah. And I guess my gre greatest accomplishment is changing my, my team's life, like wow. their livelihoods yeah. and being able to just have a very a tight knit team but really understands the, because it's more of like, I even tell them, this, this, this is our brand. Mm. This is not just my brand, it's our brand, you know. Mm. It's growth also means you grow, I grow, That's you thing. know. This is where our milk, our food yes. comes from. Our <laughs> yes, red comes absolutely. from here. Yeah. Absolutely, so that pride thing, and I can see we have like a team spirit, and mm. I'm very happy about that. You know, I, I like the fact that a lot of young Rwandans are coming back home. Yes. 
but there could be somebody who's watching and they're stuck there. Mm -hmm. There's not much going on mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. There's just that fear mm -hmm. of coming back home and they're wondering where will I start. What Absolutely. would you say to such a person? Because to you me. were once there. You might have not had the fear, <laughs> but you were once yeah. out there and you could have stayed there, yes. but you came back home. Yes. One thing is you never know until, because like, until you take a, a leap of faith, I guess, or until you come out of darkness, until you do it, you won't know. And it's always good to try and fail than fail to try and not know. True. You know? Mm. So that's what I try always tell fail. people. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's nothing to lose. And yeah. that's something a lot of young people, we live in fear because of, like I said, social media, competition. You're seeing this one. You're comparing yourself to this one. Yeah. But it's really about you and it's about your journey. And it's, it's about if you really look at, you know, whatever surrounds you, you lose your focus. Mm. And take the leap of faith. Yes. Yeah. And there's so much going on in the country at the moment. So it's much like, going on. Yeah. The government and, uh, doing all it takes absolutely. to ensure there's an environment that yes. is welcoming and embracing mm -hmm. new ideas. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And in all sectors too. And in all sectors. Yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah. And uh, I feel like the Rwandan, uh, uh, Rwanda as a, as a country, mm -hmm. we really embraced new things yeah so i always be, i always tell people if you have an idea and you feel like it's not if you come and do it well you will succeed that is so true mm -hmm. yes and as you said earlier the fact that it's it's still a young country it's still a young country. Locked and all, yes there are lots of opportunities lots of opportunities so you come up with an idea invest yes. in it invest in it it will go places being innovative it's it's hard cake <laughs> like they like to say that's it i was yeah. at an event recently and this man said rwanda is it's like the, the gateway into Africa. Absolutely. And so you have the op anyone, the young people have an opportunity yeah. to start something here yeah. that will find... And the whole world is way. looking at us. People exactly. want to come here. And uh, yeah. you, we have to take advantage. Yeah. It's I, our time. It's our time. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's our time. It's Wanda's time. <laughs> it is our time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, before we take a quick break and have a look at six cues, uh, as we mark Kwibuka Tati, Sonia. Mm -hmm. What is in your heart? If someone asked you to say something about it, where we are today, where we've come from, where we are today, and where we are going. Because mm -hmm. indeed we are on a journey. We are on a journey. We are on a journey. Mm -hmm. If somebody just wanted to seek a word from you, what a word. would it be? For me, I mean, I'm going to say protection mode. And just like... You want to protect something that's yours. Mm -hmm. I want to protect, like, we've done so much as a country, as a society in the past 30 years. And the sustainability of what we've built relies on us. So I'm in that protective mood. Like, I'm, I'm protecting. We have this. <laughs> let's protect it. Let's protect it. So yeah. that's why there's a lot of genocide denial, for example. There's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, people trying to bring us down, trying to bring, as a, as a country, try to you know and when i get a platform like this yeah. it's my chance to say that no mm. you cannot do it we and we should not allow them we're not going to allow it yeah so i just think that we we have something to protect that yeah. our people there are people who lost their lives with this and we owe it to them we owe it to the survivors we owe it to ourselves to really yeah protect what we do <laughs> yeah because yes. We're trying to, you know, now, like I said, I'm a parent, so I've said yeah. that so many times. But I'm trying to look to build, to continue, because what they have done is, 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 is massive. Yeah. And no one could have pictured. And what we have did not come easy. No, Nobody it didn't gave come it to us easy. On a no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. So, so we have to own it. We have to protect, protect it. it. Thank you mm. for that. Mm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's have a look at Sonia's six cues. This is The Real Talk. We're at Mythos Boutique uh, Hotel in Kiovu. You should find them on the different social media platforms on Twitter, Hotel Mythos. And if you have a small event, you come over, talk to them. They will sort you out. <laughs> Let's see. Sonia, six cues. These are easy questions. More relaxed. More <laughs> relaxed. <laughs> okay. The best business I, uh, advice I'll give people is you have to find something that is innovative, that responds to your client's needs, and you do it well. Yeah. I feel like 
because if you that was the trick for you <laughs> <Yeah. is it. laughs> because you have to have a product right yeah. you have to sell your product and you have to give the best thing that people are coming back for mm. and that's what i do yeah. with my sm dresses <laughs> <laughs> what is unique about the rwanda fashion industry the rwanda fashion industry is young it's hip and it's um it's 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 new mm -hmm. you know it's young is it so lucrative it is, mm. it is, it is, it is. Yeah. So it's, it's an exciting time. It's still very young, but okay. it's exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what is your interpretation of leadership? Okay. Um, I see leadership. A leader is someone who embodies, you know, who has to inspire, hmm? who has to guide, and who has to empower. Those are the three really big inspire, three. Inspire, guide, empower. Yes. And so if someone can be, and uh, so those three someone who can inspire guide and empower yeah they're its people mm, that's a leader towards a go common goal mm, and i i i think i think that's true leadership for me <laughs> thank you you've answered yeah. it well mm -hmm. and what does friendship mean to you and i know you you've talked about having kept certain friends yes. from when you're age nine yes that is a long time that's <laughs> a serious serious Absolutely. bond I wonder what friendship means to friendship you. Friendship is very important because I, I find friendship, your friends are your chosen family. You don't necessarily choose family, mm -hmm. but friends are literally your chosen. These are your chosen people. So I feel like these are some people who can even become, they, so they can even become more they can like. More than family. Yes. Yes. They can yes. become family more yes. than family. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So I really rely on friendship. And I think and you choose them wisely. You yes, think through of it. Of course, huh? of course, of course. Mm. Like there's history. You have people. You have people. You know. You have so much history with. You have people. I with saw the your same. friends at your wedding. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, there was family and friends, yes. and it did what we could all tell that. Yes. This has come a long way. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, it's it's mm -hmm. not a two month, two year Absolutely. thing. Absolutely, it's a sisterhood, yeah. and uh, these are people who will literally lift you up. These are people who will keep you accountable. Mm. And I always tell people, if you have, if you, if you feel like your friends don't empower you or they bring you down, those are not your friends. Little friends. And it's okay. I used to think I was old to be making new friends. But these days I meet people who I align with and I'm like, I'm excited to create new friendships and uh, which is exciting. Wow. Yeah. 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 Again, at every stage you, yeah, you yeah. attract a certain mm -hmm, uh, kind mm -hmm, of friend. Mm -hmm. So okay. friendship is very important. Wonderful. Yes. And what is that thing that people don't know about you? Let's finally get them. I am a uh, very, <laughs> a very sad Af uh, Arsenal fan, <laughs> like <laughs> die hard. <laughs> you are, <laughs> even when their cabinet Please. is empty. Yeah, you're I'm a die hard. I literally like you watch their games. You will like, sit yeah. up all like when night they waiting. win. I'm very happy. Like when they lose, <sighs> oh, man. and they always give you hope. And then, yeah. but I, I'm, I'm hopeful that mm -hmm. our time is coming. And you know, die hard, real Arsenal fans, die hard fans, they never leave Arsenal. No, like, we don't. In spite of the many heartbreaks, you just don't. That's what I heard. Someone, there was a joke, they're like, make sure you marry an Arsenal <laughs> fan because they're very patient. Maybe that's why your husband married you. <laughs> is that an is Arsenal, Arsenal fan? fan? <laughs> <laughs> too hardcore, yeah, too so, patient people. Yeah. <laughs> and lastly, yes. what would you say to the younger Sonia? Um, old, Sonia. I think the younger me was very scared about the future, and uh, I'll tell the younger self, to, my younger self, to take it one step, one time, and uh, at a time, mm -hmm. but also take up space. Don't don't be afraid to take up space, oh. because what's for you is for you. That's it. Take up. You never know what's waiting on the other no. side. No, and I feel like there are so many people who don't achieve. And it's because of fear. Yeah, and of course of That's fear. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is encouraging. Yeah. Just take up the space. Take up the space. Show up. Let's start a campaign of take up the space. Take up the space. <laughs> As I said, try, fail, but don't yes, fail to, to try. try. Yes. So take up the space. Yes. That's yes. nice. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank Sonia. you Thanks for making time for this I've conversation. I've had an amazing conversation. Like Me too. I said, Me too. I'm a huge fan. Thank you. Yes. Same here. <laughs> and I'm coming to pick a dress one of these days. Yes. I've made a promise. <laughs> Waiting for you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. So Thank much. you. It has been such a pleasure having this conversation with Sonia Mugabo, a fashion entrepreneur, founder of SM. And you should go check them out. But they, 
just interrupt with Sonia, even if it's just to get business advice, <laughs> you know, <laughs> business, life advice, uh, stories about motherhood, please interact with her, we'll share her Twitter handle. And we do hope that this conversation has inspired you. It's jolted you into identifying that space that has been lingering and you're going for it. Don't let it bypass you. My name is Jackie Lumbasi. It has been a pleasure talking to you. We look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you.